for me what is important is that if there's a unique objects unique object held elsewhere out of Tasmania the, the main one we can think of here would be the kelp water carrier so it's the only one that I know of that survives from the 19th century and went to London for the great exhibition of 1851 so that was um, entirely you know amazing to see for the first time um, very fortunate and that terrible longing with that object to that it should be housed in Tasmania is uh, can't be turned off that feeling is constant and I think every time I see kelp forevermore you know in, around this island um, I will just be thinking about that kelp carrier now that I've, I've witnessed it, you know, as, as the, it's the missing, you know, and it can't, it just, that sense of that is very strong. So that's what I've been thinking is more, more and more is that if an object is unique and not one, and it's not in Tasmania, it should be home. And if it's, um, or has a particular strong story with a connection to, to here, that kind of overrides why it happens to be over there, that should be, un, you know, considered as well as, a, you know, candidate for return, and I like to think about what happened in um, '97 when Exeter Museum in 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 England actually approached the Tasmanian Aboriginal community, and a very forward thinking and quite shocking for Britain proposed the the uh, repatriation back to Tasmania of a shell necklace and bracelet um, that Truganinim made. So the, so the Tasmanian Aboriginal community sent across three delegates to Exeter in England, South England, and what happened from that return of those objects, which are unique in that shell necklaces made by Tuganini, very rare. There's one other that I know of um, in South Australia, Art Gallery of South Australia, which may or may not be. It's just, but So this, this is a, a case in point of a return that would be really valuable because it happened to be... You know, the, the reason for how it ended up in Exeter is very is, is kind of, you know, odd and accidental. Um, so, so what happened in that, in that story of the people coming from Tasmania was that they brought over baskets and it was an exchange. And they have ended up in Exeter with contemporary beautiful works by elder, you know, weavers in Tasmania, from Tasmania, Aboriginal weavers. And, and that story, and that story is worth, you know, worth so much because it means there's an ongoing relationship with that museum. You know, it's a, it's a huge thing. So things can kind of grow and become different from thinking about ways of, you know, what, what is or isn't, what's the nature of a museum? You know, what is it a static object that must forevermore be that representative thing about Tasmania? Or, you know, is, is it something else that things can move and grow? And museums are, traditionally, were always moving and people were you know, non-Aboriginal, you know, usually, the curators in museums in the past were just um, trading and moving objects around the world, you know, every five minutes. So it's only recently this whole thing about, you know, it's it's here, it's ours. When you look at records, you get that shock about, no, these, these objects were completely mobile and um, very different world. So the rules that are being played today are not, um, you know, that, that we could actually revert back to something where actually the negotiations happening with, with Aboriginal peoples about future you know future narratives and future ways of um heading towards for objects to move you know back forward new objects to replace other objects etc oh.